Welcome to the Arcady Group Thinkers Podcast, the podcast for nonprofit marketers. This is a show about the people who influence nonprofit marketing and fundraising. And we have uh, a builder uh, of influence today, Ronnie. Matt D. Benedetti, uh, one of the newest members of the Arcady Group team. Yeah, I like that you called him a builder. We'll touch on that in a second, but Matt, yeah, he's our senior vice president and executive creative director here at RKD. And yeah, it really stands out to me when we talk to him and to our listeners, like, as you listen to this episode, try and like pick up on this and, and, and how he speaks, like he really talks like an engineer or an architect or uh, it, it, you don't necessarily feel creative vibe from him right away, but certainly like a huge aspect of his background and, and his talent and his career is creative, but he thinks about it in putting this creative in structures and, and processes and that uh, like, that's such an important part of how you, you know, you do this as an agency, but like, yeah, it's just, he talks like an engineer, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He totally does. Uh, and, and again, not in a bad way, right? Because no, 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 there, not at all. There's, there's the, uh, the creative um, tour de force that, uh, that still comes out. And you know what I think is so interesting, Ronnie, is that the time that we're in and a lot of the things that we've been talking about, you and I in particular on this show and, uh, and maybe in other, other circumstances over the last, let's call it two years now of you know, a moment of transformation and connection being a currency for us. Um, there is a, a component of that that is the realization that there is not one message to rule them all. And, and instead of one message to rule them all, there's a message for the Ronnies and a message, a message for the Justins and, and messages for other audiences that you have to be able to architect. And, right. uh, and so Matt's uh, skill set, his expertise, you know, it, it's, it, walks right into that and what a wonderful time to be bringing that talent to the nonprofit marketing and fundraising space as we're entering into this new phase. Um, so super excited to be able to share a little bit more about him. Uh, and so without any further ado, here's Matt D. Been a builder. Um, let's see what did, I love it. Was that? That was creative. I was. But structured. <laughs> I was trying so hard to make sure that I didn't fumble getting that out. Like I, I really wanted to Matt D Benedetti of RKD group on the thinkers podcast. Matt, you're a, um, you you seem like the type of person that bucks some trends. I don't know if you know that or not. I, I did not know that, but uh, I'm, it's funny that you say that as you know, I've only been here for a few months now and as I've gotten started, I've just, we had some initiatives for me coming in. And once I got here, I, there was a few more that I've added on and I've just, I've jumped in head first. So I yeah. feel like, I, yeah, I feel like I'm making some, some differences. Uh, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, well, I think one of the primary trends that uh, I have observed in your background is that your you know your time here at RKD like this is your third the third company that you've worked at in your career and that is incredibly uncommon in this sector and broadly just like within our generation and so um you know the three companies in you know some close to 30 years yeah. uh that's rare and that's, uh, that is where you are definitely a, a trend bucker. Uh, so what excited you, like why this, why this opportunity, what was it about this, uh, and or the, that you felt like it was the right time for a new challenge? Yeah. Well, let me start. Um, when I stayed with my former organizations for longer periods of time, it's largely due to personal growth. I, they, they kept challenging me and I kept growing and I kept learning. And, and that, that was just exciting to begin with. So I was able to it, not only not only help the organizations, but um, everything I was learning, I could apply in the future. And that's what brought me to, to where I am today, where 
you know, I, I was previously at a hyper growth agency. I wore a lot of hats and I learned about technology and personalization and media networks and, and, and tactics and approaches for optimization and coming to nonprofit or to be able to support fundraising specifically. It just seems that this space can benefit from everything that I've learned. I, I feel that, you know, there's, there's been approaches that have been um, put in nonprofit for so long and not much has changed um, where it, I'm, a lot of my experience came from the commercial space and in the commercial agency space. And there's been a lot of investment um, with technology and, and, and learned approaches that ha they have been proven to work. And I feel that I can apply them here and really make, as I mentioned, just some great impacts out of the gate. Um, and, and that's really what, what interested me here. I feel like I can come here and truly make a difference, not only for our clients, but just, just in this space at large. Hmm. So, so thinking about that, yeah. what you've seen at, in the commercial space, what you're seeing in the nonprofit space now, like, what is it about your approach to creative and how you think about creative that's like, what, what are you bringing that's different that you're seeing here, you know, now that you've had a few months to observe? Yeah, it's a great, a great question. Um, I, I think everything, there, there's several approaches that, that add up to the overall solution, but everything is all about data. It's everything is founded in data. Um, and, and that's what everything is built off of. First of all, you want to start with um, best practices, right? And best practices is a term you hear all over. And every agency say, you know, say they have best practices, but are those practices um, based in data? Proven techniques and approaches that work in different verticals and different channels. Uh, in um, it, it, once those are documented, um, you train your teams on those, and and then you truly apply those best practices. For instance, our documented best practices will outperform any creative, any, any standard creative, just by giving us that, that chance to audit what you have and refresh it based on those data tested best practices. So that's the first foundation. The second is, and, and, and you're probably starting to hear this more and more um, coming out, coming out of RKD, it's all around personalization, right? It's content relevancy. And that's, you only have split seconds uh, uh, to make an impact. Um, Donors and consumers and audiences are just overwhelmed with information coming their way across across the different channels uh, on their phones, just from every every everyone. So, you, with that limited time, how are you going to make your creative and content and messaging relate to to in a particular individual? How are you going to capture their attention? So, what you need to do is first define specifically, who are you speaking to? Um, so we're not just speaking to a one size fits all audience anymore. We want to define uh, specific audiences, understand who they are, analyze the data on, on who they are so that you can in turn resonate with that audience. Uh, and this is, you're just getting me excited here because this is, this is, um, there's, though there's, that's a general approach. It's the, the science behind the scenes that really uh, help support us here where, as you're developing that content um, for for each particular audience, you want to relate to those audiences both on an emotional level as well as a rational level. We each think uh, from both sides of our brain, so you need to develop that key messaging based on what you understand on that audience that's going to relate with with each individual, and then. Um, it, it, these approaches will help determine the the overall strategic strategic um, angles that, that you can take in those audiences that you're speaking to. For instance, the different audiences can be age-based, they can be donor interest-based, they can be based on their past actions or even weather and location. You're gonna to speak to each one of those audiences separately. I'm going to keep rolling here because this is the, the, this is the whole linear track here. Um, it is, with, it's, it's definitely a linear track. Dude, keep going, dude, man. Yeah. Don't just stop yeah, me if going. you have any questions. Um, but so, um, now you're engaging with these audiences um, with content that's going to relate to them. But uh, the, this industry is very channel uh, centric where mm. today um, 
we're even, you see agencies or agencies and even the nonprofit organizations themselves are very siloed where they uh, might submit an RFP to us from my short time here from what I've seen just for direct mail or just for digital and email channel um, where we need to think about our channels holistically from an omni-channel perspective, how they're going to support one another. Because as you're speaking with these donors and, and you're engaging with them, you want to engage where they want to be reached and follow their experience as well across channels. So I, I, I urge any um, nonprofit organizations that are sending out RFPs, think about it to us and, your, and to, the, to the world. Think about um, really omni-channel uh, approaches versus just that, that single channel because they truly do need to work together. But I think there's, there's two things that come to mind as you're, you're sharing that, Matt. Uh, one, I had this, this picture come to mind over the weekend uh, that speaks to that channel hold that we have within the sector and, uh, and how that relates to RFPs and or just broad fundraising decision-making that occurs right now in the space. Yeah. And for me, this mental picture was, you know, we at an organization may be at point A and point B is, is the destination that we're trying to get to. But because there's such a, a channel hold, it's like if I had a, a destination that I wanted to get to, yeah. but I, I demanded that Uber only use blue cars right. to get me there. And I'm only interested in a blue car. And Uber is saying, no, 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 like, Here's, here's the, the cars that are uh, from least amount to most amount within your budget, or uh, here are cars that offer different features. Like, don't worry about the color, but I'm so fixated on the color in the same way that many times we get so fixated on the channel as being the vehicle to get from A to B, and right. it's not necessarily the channel. So like, that's a lot of the trappings uh, that we're, we're stuck in. As someone who is arguably just as much engineer as uh, as creative, yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you how do you change someone's perspective on wanting just blue cars and instead saying no 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 let's talk about what's the right vehicle to get you from point A to point B? Yeah, it's a really good example you gave with the Uber because it, it's it's around audience, right? They, they've generated a model to appeal to different audiences. And th that's exactly what, what, what we're doing. And I think the, the proof to be able to change the mindset of this, really the, the, this ecosystem is, is proving it out. It, again, it's data based. It, it's take your traditional channel set creative, and then compare that to an Omni-channel audience approach, creative, uh, and 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 it's it's testing. It's it's you're proving it out with the data testing. So it's these case studies that we're bringing forward to really prove out that this truly does work. Now, I don't want to say that any channel it doesn't work by itself. Um, there are specific cases where you may need uh, single channels, but truly the channels working together support one another, uh, and and that 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 it, it, I've seen it through the commercial landscape on how it works, but you can't take just my word for it. Um, you, you need to, you need to see the proof uh, and our, our clients are going to need to see the proof um, that the omni-channel approach truly on audience led omni-channel approach truly does work. And go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So um, Matt, have you ever read and or watched Moneyball? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, so if I make a Moneyball reference, that's not going to like, you're not just going to blink. No, it. no, I, I, it's a great right. movie. And uh, again, they, they use data, right? Well, I was going to say, like, yeah. do you feel like Jonah Hill's character? <laughs> like it, the, the, cause you're, you, and look, I, it's funny that you say that. Yeah. I, I just, I love, I love the creative process. I love, I love seeing creativity come to life. I understand everything you're saying, but I'm still drawn to what's the message that resonates with me as a decision maker. And yeah. sometimes that gets in the way of me making the right decisions for like a broader right. 
expression into a market. Like, so it, it feels very much like a money ball kind of moment and you're a Jonah Hill <laughs> type of character yeah. walking into this thing. Yeah. The, I, it, it's also a convergence, right? So we're, we're talking about data led technology is finally here. It's robust. It, it, it's, it's cost effective to use now. Um, we're, we, we think about the way we're developing creative differently and you're, and you're seeing this you're, you're, where you, the, the approaches that we use are we you think about developing templates now uh, as opposed to an individual creative a template that is highly adaptable for every situation you can't think of templates as a, as a bad thing templates are a great thing because they they allow the ability to use dynamic content which is adaptable to every scenario, every audience um, with that dynamic content it, it, it automatically builds templates and this enables, this, this data centric approach enables the, a, a lot of benefits. It's going to hmm. enable production efficiencies, right? Um, so that it's going to reflect actually what it costs for our clients to produce content at larger, at a greater scale. So they're going to see cost get, get reduced. They're going to see speed to market being a factor as well, where when you're, you, when you're working in this, data centric model where you're developing multitudes of content for audiences, you're working in uh, essentially a content matrix versus building each creative individually. So that's where you're saving costs, but you're also getting, getting to market faster because you can immediately up, upload content and push, push out that content dynamically. So time, speed to market, and then there's the optimization piece as well. And we didn't even talk about that. I, when you're in this data, build creative model, you, you can start uh, imploring tactics such as rapid optimization, where you can put multitudes of content into the market at the same time using uh, DCO uh, technologies, where for each audience, I might want to test 10 different, let's make it simple, 10 different headlines or 10 different backgrounds or combinations of that with C different CTAs and so on against maybe four different audiences. And then once this creative is put into market, um, the technology can auto remove any underperforming creative. So that if the if certain creative is not performing, it's going to automatically improve or automatically leave the highest performing creative in market. Um, and that's just going to allow dollars for your media dollars and so on to be maximized. Um, so I think when you're, when you're asking for proof, the proof, once you implore it, it, it comes with time, hmm. cost, money, performance. You get the, so I, I, it's taking that first step to prove it out really hmm. for each client. Yeah. Matt, I'm really curious. So in college, I started down a track of civil engineering before I switched over into writing and journalism. And my wife is a computer engineer. So I've spent a lot of time around engineers and Justin kind of referenced this earlier, yeah. like, you speak and sound like an engineer. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, did you, which were you first? Like, were you creative or engineer or did it kind of develop together and in, in this yeah. mutual track? Like how, how did that come about for you in your path to where you are now? Yeah. I think I'm in an interesting place where I started creative, right? I mean, that has been my background since I was two years old and, and the artwork I used to create. And, but once I, went moved into my professional career uh developing creative for clients um but i had an aptitude for technology um and and, and actually production as well i i earlier in my career i started supporting print production and i was able to translate to the creatives how they needed to develop their the the, the creative to be production ready basically so switching that immediately working in production and then technology as that started evolving uh, with digital asset management systems and workflow systems and with the internet boom, uh, you know, putting my age out there, but um, I, I grasped that technology quickly and um, started seeing the benefits of implementing those technologies. I would create justification cases to be able to bring in those different systems to make work more efficient, more cost-effective, uh, less errors. And then we moved into the ability to be able to pr 
personalize, right? And that was that was kind of bringing it all together. So understanding the technology side of it um, in, I should almost say it the other way around, understanding the creative side of it and really grasping the technology and bringing the two mm -hmm. together. That, that's been, that, that's been, been my role. And that's, that's where I've been lucky enough in this time of our, you know, world to grow up in that space and fortunately be on the cusp of it with the agencies I worked with. Who were some of the folks who have been some of the folks uh, through your career that have been um, mentors or that stand out as truly leaning in to help you grow? Like who are some of those individuals that have, that are on your Mount Rushmore within your, your career? Yeah, I, I think, I, I hope three isn't too many. I think three come to mind immediately, actually. Um, let me, let me go in chronological order for my career. Um, there was a, a, tree, a create, chief creative officer that I worked with, and this is still when I was in the design and creative side of things, um, where he really taught us to, to, when I say us, me and my team, to think outside the box. Um, I, very specifically, um, I, I could think of a couple of examples where we had some nonprofit, nonprofit based prospects that we were pitching. Um, we had, um, feeding America where it was, it was an RFP that we responded to and everything's going digital. Right. And we, we said, let's go traditional approach here. Let's, let's send them something in the mail. This, we, 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 um, made these elaborate kits that we sent in a mail in, in response to our RFP where we got canvas bags that you would like potato sacks and we stuffed our response in that. Uh, and anyway, so the, the takeaway is he, he had us thinking outside the box, no matter, no matter what we were doing from, from pitching all the way through execution. So mm -hmm. I, I took a lot of those thinking outside the box moments from, from uh, this individual. Um, then the next you were, you made a comment about my uh, technology aptitude and my um, executive creative director at my last job, um, who I reported to, really put a lot of trust in me um, to advance the technology, um, it, to come up with solutions. We, we saw industry challenges and, and she allowed me to figure it out basically, and build a story around how we were going to go to market, uh, around operationalizing process and, and reducing cost and, and things that resonated loudly, right. In, in the market, how, how could we get this creative to perform better using content solutions and so on. So I had a lot of trust from, from, uh, her. And then I think the most recent example, somebody that, uh, you, you all know, Chris Pritcher, um, I worked with him at my previous agency as well. And he led strategy and, um, and I led a, a large creative team and we were given a, a, we had to come up with a solution for this emerging industry. And most people, if I say it, don't even know what it is, but it's retail media networks where retail media networks uh, came on the scene seven years ago or so and became this, this, this huge industry and nobody knew how how it could work. And the, the short story of what it is, just for anybody, if they don't know, if you think about any retailer, they have data on everybody, right? Anybody who shops there mm -hmm. and that they would essentially act, act as their own media organization uh, and be able to target very specifically you and you uh, based on the products that you, that you used to shop for. So in, in this space, particularly, we had to support hundreds of uh, clients that would be advertising with each media network and produce thousands of ads in a, in a monthly basis. And how do you support that kind of volume? And we had to figure it out. And, and I worked with Chris and he trusted me here as well to develop that, that creative scenario. And uh, it, I, I don't know, I, I, I I think it was mutual respect. I, I learned a lot about uh, Chris and his approaches uh, for personalization and relevancy and mm -hmm. so on. Uh, and then tactically, I would bring that to life. Um, so I, mm -hmm. I, I, I look to him as some inspiration as well. I'm curious, Matt, when you need to come up with a new idea or something innovative, 
what is like your go-to process? Because every creative has a way that they can escape from all the day-to-day -day stuff and brainstorm and come up with new, fresh ideas. Like, what's your process for that? Yeah, I. It's it's interesting. I don't think I've ever been asked this question, but <laughs> before before I do anything, I put on um, a, a soundtrack station. Uh, I, I stream uh, music while I'm working, music that's going to inspire me. Uh, and it's usually movie soundtracks. So just instrumental, something that really gets you going. Yeah, music score. And, and I've got them some going. John Williams, some yeah, Hans Zimmer. You get it, right? And, and <laughs> they go all day long. And in fact, if we weren't talking right now, they, they would be on. But that sets the foundation for my creativity. And then I, I will take the challenge uh, and write it down in my own words. So I, I, I bring up a word document and, and start putting all of the challenges and all the pieces together and then distill that and think through the process uh, of how I want to bring this to life. So it's, I'm, I, I write in my spare time. So to be able to visualize it and then I will take that outline and usually move that to something visual, uh, a, a visual application, and then build it out from there. So if it's a presentation in PowerPoint, I tell every story with a PowerPoint. Um, I'm surprised I'm not using one right now. If you gave me some time here, but, um, uh, but that, or, or a design application uh, to, to build a, bring a creative to life. And then, God, there's really has, uh, so much to it. And then there's developing the content. There's tools that I, have built and turned onto my teams as well um, to be able to develop content. It, it's you, tools that ask you yourself questions. So you ask yourself questions, uh, come up with those answers. Uh, if you think about it, it's kind of like a personal creative brief. Um, so ask yourself questions. Maybe it's maybe it's audience questions or whatever it may be, and then use and, and then break those answers and then extract the headlines and things like that out of that. Um, so it's, it's quite a creative process, but it's funny. I've never asked anybody the question I'd, and I'd be curious to see uh, other people's answers to that response, but I'm sure it always starts with music in the background. <laughs> very common, very common. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, Matt, we uh, we're thrilled one that you're a part of our team uh, and so, you know, uh, love that you have transitioned into the space and that you're bringing a new rigor of self-reflection and, uh, architecture to the way that, um, we're connecting with donors across, um, the many clients that we work with. So, um, good on you for, for answering the, the call whenever it came. I appreciate it. I I'm excited to be here uh, at RKD, and I'm excited for everything that I, I'm looking forward to bringing uh, each and every to each and every one of our clients. Um, it, it's just I'm looking forward to just the the really even the, the short term more than anything because we're going to change this industry, and it, there's just so much potential to to be able to help everybody. And the next six months, I think, just as as I get out there and start speaking to our clients, it, it's we're going to flip the script overnight. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you very much for your time as well. Totally agree. All right, man. We'll catch up down the road. Take care.